Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. Hey, just the other day, I did a little video talking about this homemade scribe. Of course, I had so many requests about how it was made, you know, where I got it, you know, things of that nature. So I made a little video on it. But then I got to thinking there's other repetitive motions that I don't even think about that I, that we do whenever we're laying out duct work, but I don't really highlight, you know, the technique or what it is that I use in order to do it. And that's whenever you're laying out a good number of straight ducts that are going to be like a eight inch in height by various widths like 8 by 12, 8 by 14, 8 by 16, 18, and 20, whatever. But you have that standard 8 inch dimension, which is going to require you to measure in from at least one edge of every piece of duct, 9 inches, to allow the 8 inch for the height of the duct and the 1 inch for the lock farming machine or the Pittsburgh lock. And so you don't want to have to measure that every single time with your ruler because, again, you use your scribe to get the, the four basic measurements, you know, and then you need then you have to use your uh, another means in order to get that 9 inch dimension. A lot of times we'll just go ahead and, and grab our tape measure, you know, if it's just one or two, flip it open, you know, and go ahead and make the mark at nine inches, whatever. Um, and that's good if you're just doing one or two. But if you're stacking up 12 half sections at a time, which is what I typically do when I'm running a whole bunch of duck, I've got to make 12 repetitive marks on my duck. And it's kind of aggravating to use the, um, to, to use the folding rule. So what you do is you stack your duct up or your flat pieces of metal up and you just kind of offset them just a little bit so that you can, without moving any of them, you can just mark one, then the next, then the next, then the next, all the way up like stair steps. Okay, but instead of using a tape measure, instead of using a, the tape measure or a folding rule, which I prefer, a lot of guys use trammel points. Now everybody knows what trammel points are. Trammel points are the little adjustable things that you can actually put on a circumference rule and um, we can use it for marking circles and stuff. And there's also specific things called trammel points that you can actually buy, very similar to a couple of homemade ones I've got here. I was going to show you those. So say you're going to be making a, making a 12 inch duck, you know, 12 inch high by whatever. Uh, you want to set that at 13 inches if you're using a, a Pittsburgh lock, not if you're using a uh, a TDF fitting, but that's entirely another story. But anyway, what you do is you take your trammel points and you set those to the dimension you need and then just go ahead and use that to mark. It's a little cumbersome, a little awkward because typically your trammel points are very long. Take a look at these guys right here. This is shortened almost all the way up to the shortest dimension. This being the absolute shortest dimension and it's still, it's still 24 inches long. So expanded, these things get out about, you know, 30, 32 inches. Now these are great if you are making um, radius fittings uh, or something like that or you're cutting uh, cutting circles you know to make uh, flu caps and things of that nature they're absolutely great for that but whenever you're laying out small pieces they get a little unwieldy because in order to get your small dimension for like an eight or a nine inch duck you have to thro throttle them all the way in to that dimension right here and then that leaves all this tremendous amount of excess length that's kind of in the way, especially if you're like me, I always have a cluttered workbench, there's always more projects going on than I have room for. So those are always in the way. So they're not really good for doing what it is I'm gonna show you, but they're still functional. Now these here, like I said, there are store-bought ones that are very similar to this, but this is nothing more than two big long pieces of uh, quarter inch blower shaft key stock. And this is a piece of spring steel and it's cut in notches oval shapes to where both of these will slide in then allow you to slide it back and forth and everything to add grip to it or release grip you know to to hold it in position and these are nothing more than uh, like a number 10 screw sharpened on the end and then lock nuts and everything to hold them in place at the position you know that's just a simple way of making one um, they do make store-bought ones that are very similar to this and here's another one here this one here Starrett makes one very close to, to this design but Regardless of how good this looks, it's still homemade. It's just a, a piece of three-quarter inch blower shaft that's drilled and tapped for the uh, the wing nuts right here to hold the trammel point in, the actual replaceable tips in, and then also up here to adjust it to hold its adjustment on your um, on your round rod. And this is nothing more than quarter inch round stock right here. So this is a lot easier to set your dimension, okay, and leave one fixed on this end here. Set this dimension here. Go ahead and rest, rest this against your duct, and go ahead and make your mark, and make your mark, and make your mark. But still, you have this here, which is uh, 30 inches or so sticking out, and it gets in the way sometimes. Now, like I said, even though this is a homemade machine or homemade tool, these are actually replaceable store-bought trammel points right here, so you don't have to worry about um, 
not been able to come up with something. Of course, you can make your own, you know, if you got a, a little piece of 3 16 round stock or something. But these are actually replaceable and these are factory made. They do get dull, but that's not a big problem on sharp. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a few minutes. But anyway, any this is another viable option for doing the, what I'm telling the, that you do whenever you're marking out a whole stair step full of uh, flat ducks. However, what I like to do is, <laughs> because this is much shorter, just take a piece of half inch or three quarter inch scrap wood, whatever, and measure you one point right here in from the end at a convenient distance and stick a pop rivet down in through there. And then you come out here and you measure like if you, if you make a standard uh, seven inch duct, you want to make an eight inch hole, eight inch duct, make a nine inch hole, 10 inch duct, etc., etc., etc. So you can see a series of holes drilled into here. And so what you do to determine which one you want, like this is set for nine inches right here, which is for an eight inch duct, and then you just rest this trammel point, homemade trammel point, right against the outside edge of your duct, and use this one here to make your mark. Much simpler, much quicker, much easier. Doesn't cost anything. If you lose it, you just make another one. I've got a half a dozen of them over here. Now these are nothing more than standard 3 16 aluminum rivets. Uh, if you can find steel rivets, steel rivets will work better because the steel rivets will hold the point a lot longer. But it doesn't matter. As long as you have a belt sander or a, uh, a handheld belt sander, you can chuck up in the vise, you know, and then go ahead and sharpen it. You don't have to use a, uh, a belt sander. If you happen to have one, it's really convenient to use. But uh, again, here's your 3 16 rivet. Chuck it up in your drill. My battery's about dead. And literally just that quick in real time, you can see now you've got a perfectly sharp trammel point that you can use until it gets dull. Just come back over, touch it up again, takes three to five seconds, and you got her sharp and ready to go. So like I say, you know, we go ahead and pull this uh, damaged one or dent it out and put it in the brand new one right there, and we are ready to go. Again, you stair step your metal all the way up, and you hook the outside edge right on the, the first piece of metal, and at your one inch scribe, remember you'll take and make a one inch scribe for down here for your double hem flange. And then you'll take this, I just kind of like to hold it like, uh, like that end with a handle, set it right against that end, and right there on the one inch mark, put your scribe like that. Then you move up to the next piece of metal and make a on the one inch mark, and then up to the next, and the next, and the next. And literally in, in 20 seconds, you've marked 12 sheet halves with the nine inch dimension for the notch for the 90 degree fold whenever you're making your duct halves. Again, these work absolutely fine and dandy. They're just a little unwieldy, but you do exactly the same thing. You just mark them and go right up the line just like that. And you don't have to use a belt sander. I just use it because it's convenient. You can use any kind of an angle grinder or, or, or something like that. But the real trick is using the drill to keep it rolling, and that keeps your point centered on the dowel or whatever it is, the material that you're making the point on. Anyway, that's just a simple and, uh, simple and easy thing to do. Now talking about scribes, um, I did a whole video, never did edit it and put it up there, but I've got a whole selection of scribes, different ones are used at different times, but I just happen to have this particular one on the bench because it's the one I use quite frequently, you know, because it's nice and long. Um, I use an ice pick a lot too because reach it all the way across a four feet piece of metal, that ice pick gives me that extra reach, you know, to go ahead and start my scribe line. And this one here is nice and long like a piece, of, like an ice pick. In an auction box, I found some, some little a little round rod that was kind of a hard, a good material. So I sharpened down to a point one day and I took a, an old bolt. This is like a 5 8 standard, 5 8 bolt right here. I cut the end off of it and shined it up on the belt sander, drilled a hole in the end of it just to where this would fit in there with the press fit, chucked this up in a vise and drove that down on there. So I got myself a bit of a handle so that I don't jam it into the palm of my hand you know, if you're running across and, and jam into something. So this is the one I use quite a lot right here. It's just a, a little scribe. And I noticed one of the, a couple of guys talk about my folding rule. I love a folding rule because your degree of accuracy is so much better in my estimation than a, uh, than a tape measure. If you try it a few times and get, get the hang of it, I think you'll probably agree at the same time. So I keep them sprayed with WD-40 so that you can spin them open pretty easily. You know, I keep them, uh, keep them sprayed down with WD-40 or a uh, spray silicone. Now, <laughs> I, I think everybody knows the difference between an inside rule and an outside rule. I'm sure there might be one or two that do not, especially younger people. But if you take a look right here, this is a typical inside read. And by inside, I mean 
with everything folded open and laying down on the bench for a sharp dimension, everything is open and on the top side. Okay, this is a carpenter rule, which is an outside read. If you notice, we have it folded open and all the sharp dimensions start at 72, 71, 70. Well, to get a sharp dimension, well, you got this nice slide right here, which is very handy in and of itself. But you got your sharp dimensions, you're laying out on duck. Whenever you're up here, you can't, it's just very awkward because you can't bend it down because you're going to break your rule if you're a little bit careless with it. Or you have to open this up way too far in order to push this down in order to get your sharp dimension down. So that's why most sheet metal guys that use folding rules use the inside or the tenors rule versus an outside rule. That's just a little sharp note, you know, for, for, for the younger people that might not be aware or people that don't uh, don't use folding rules. I never really think about a lot of the simpler things on the on the industry. I'm always I'm always thinking about the things that I'm making, the things that I'm laying out, the things that I'm doing, and very seldom give a lot of in-depth thought, you know, to the tools and and things like that that I'm actually using. Uh, like I said, I, a couple years ago, I don't know, it was just a uh, just a nasty day, I think, and I just sat in here and just laid out all my different scribes, hand scribes, and. Uh, did a little video on it. I never did edit it because I thought, man, this is stupid. Ain't nobody going to want to see this, you know. And so anyway, I still have it in the lineup somewhere, you know. If anybody's interested, I'll go ahead and edit that thing out, uh, you know, on one of these nasty days and go ahead and put that up kind of right along in with the, with this series here on the scribes. But I hope you all enjoyed that little bit about trammel points. Um, and like I say, you can buy all of those and you can actually make them. They, they take absolutely nothing to, to make. Uh, you can just see as quick and simple if you got basic shop tools you can make it yourself and it works just fine absolutely perfectly and you know what this is trackman 44 <laughs> i'm out of here guys